One Lima takes six. Mark. All right, this one is for all of my diehard viewers out there. This week, we're finally doing another cinematography breakdown on how we captured this day exterior product shot for Mike's Hard Lemonade last summer. This was a spot I was lucky enough to be the DP on, and I used my red Komodo and Schneider Xenon cine lenses, along with some very special filters. Now, two months ago, back in March, I broke down this entire commercial over on my Patreon. So if you're interested in that, here is the link as well as down in the description below. It's over three hours of content on this project alone. But this specific product shot was one of my favorite frames of the entire piece. And since I had a small but very efficient team with me along with my gaffer, David Goodman of Goodman Grip and Light, I thought, hey, let's talk about this over on the YouTube as well. And one of my Patreon members, Matt Leo, was shooting all of the behind the scenes. So we got plenty of fun stuff to look at. Let's dive in. Okay, so we're just gonna kind of skim through this real quick. As you can see, we had a lot of cool product shots in this, like close up, beautiful shots with the 75 mil Schneider Xenon. We got this, you know, burger getting fully uh, juiced out with mustard there. You know, there's some things that I wasn't too stoked about and we go over all of that over on the Patreon. Here's our main hero shot, which is another one of my favorites. However, uh, right here is the main one we're gonna be looking at today. Now, in terms of, you say, Justin, why did some shots get messed up? As cool as this project was, it was still ultra low budge, right? Let's not forget the realm that I live in. This was very dog times. Because of that, uh, we were limited on resources, manpower, and time. If it was up to me and we had infinite budget, this is something I would have pushed to have at least two days to work on. The reason is, is because this involved five actors and cameras. Camera was looking 360 degrees because of the blocking. I do share a lot of behind the scenes over on my personal Instagram at Kid Tech, as well as my production company at Dog Times Productions. I share a lot of BTS in the reels and stories. So be sure to follow me over there. And so last summer, someone did message me like, doesn't this seem a little, a lot? Why didn't you just do this in studio? And if you're only seeing the product shot, I guess, yeah. But the reality is, you know, we shot this at the director's house, right? So this is a backyard barbecue pool scene. I had no input on the location because it was the director's house, but lucky enough, she was wise enough to lean on me for the shooting schedule. Now, I knew that this particular product shot, as well as our main hero shot, this one right here, right? So he has two shots. This is his close up, obviously. I knew those angles were the shots that I was leaning on to look the best, right? So because of that, I kind of scheduled the entire day around those two shots. That's just something to maybe consider. If you know you're really gonna be pushed on time and resources and manpower, you know, set it up accordingly. You're obviously going to have, uh, hopefully, a better manicured image the tighter you get. Wide shots are always hard to pull off when you are limited on resources. We're not gonna get into that. I wanna make this video all about this. If you're interested in any of that other stuff, the downfalls, uh, the hiccups, all of that stuff, I am the best uh, at tearing down my own work, but I do keep it limited to Patreon for obvious reasons. So let's get into this right away. My first note when I was, you know, doing like the post-mortem on the Patreon that I shared with all of them over there, I said, you know what, looking back on this now, we should have just like filled this out a little bit. Like, why do we only have one bottle in one can? Like, you know, it wasn't that low budget, right? <laughs> but that was kind of our own fault. You know, no one thought of that. We didn't have an actual um, like production designer on this job uh, or certainly not an art deck, but at least I thought ahead to know and let our hair and makeup and special effects, which is Mia Sage, so shout out to her. I did reach out to her beforehand in the pre-production process and say, hey, can we, can we get some glycerin so we can do like 50-50? So that's an old school trick. If you go half water, half glycerin and a little spray bottle, and that's how you can maintain consistency of this condensation, right? And uh, we got our ice here. So this is the look, right? Now, if, if we let this play, you'll see the ripples in the background back there. So it goes to him looking kind of downtrodden. And then we go to this and it's boom, and then we have a splash in the background. So we had one of our guys do a big cannonball back there. Now, thinking about this, the bit, the next thing that you may all already be thinking of, something else that I thought of in the postmortem as well, is like, I probably shouldn't have went so shallow depth of field here. It would have been nice to maybe gone like a 2.8, maybe even a 4, just to, just to see a little bit more of what's going on back there, right? Because right now it's like, mm, it's a little too shallow. And this is only a T2 on the Super 35 of the Red Komodo, right? So, you know, a lot of people talk about, oh, you know, I need a 1.4. I mean, 
Do you though? Imagine this on full frame. It would be even more shallow. Right, so T2 on Super 35, this is pretty damn shallow. Now granted, this is a 75 millimeter lens, um, but I think most guys even have a tighter one than that. Most people are shooting like the 90 mil if you're in the Leica R world, uh, or like something like Zeiss lenses, cine lenses are like 85, 100, right? So 75 is even less than what most guys would lean on for their like tight lens. So, But just to give you an idea, this is how shallow T2 is on Super 35. One amazing thing that I love about the Schneider Xenons, look at that beautiful round circular bokeh, and that's at any T-stop all the way down to T20. Too. Talked about that in my big review of why I started using real cine lenses on uh, jobs like this, right? I apologize for digressing. Let's get in here and start looking at the BTS so I can kind of start showing you what's going on. We already know that we're being backlit by the sun. So the sun's way back here now because this is towards the end of the day now. Let's get in and look at the behind the scenes. This is literally what we do on the Patreon every week. Well, so the question is, is we either we can kill the sun Lovely. and just use it as ambient. The sun can be anywhere. Yeah. That would be ideal because I'd rather this be the shadow side and key coming this way so I can be shooting more into the pool shadow side with me. Yes. Then I would bring in a hard light here to give us that white line. But I would keep, More upstage though, right? I would keep this and diffuse it so that you have this as your back maybe edge. Maybe a little soft, just a poly here. So we wrap it. A little it. return. Yeah, and then black it and then the ping. I don't want fronty pings, backside pings. Uh, we just use card for this, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. okay. <laughs> Let me go get some card for us. Okay. So David is, man, the, the man is the man, right? He, his first job in the film industry ever was working on Titanic. <laughs> okay, so the guy is legit. But you know, you guys know how kind of neurotic and OCD I am, right? And as you'll see here, when I'm on set and, and, the, and the stakes are high and my anxiety is boosted, my neuroticism is even more through the roof. But I think it's just because my brain moves quicker than my mouth. I'm a little bit ADD, but very OCD too. So there's just a lot going on up here that I can't always keep up with. But I love working with David because of his experience and everything. And I, I love surrounding myself with people that are more talented than I, right? Because then I always walk away from things learning stuff. But you guys know uh, I'm also constantly learning, right? I'm constantly evolving. And working with guys like David is going to help excel that. David is such a good, kind man that he's so patient with me. And I don't realize this, you know, this dynamic until I can watch these BTS videos, you know? And, and then you see it and then you see that he's, he's so patient with me. Like, he's so good. Um, and he's really good at, like, adapting. And, and here's the thing, like, he can walk away from this and know what I want. This was not the first job we've done together, right? So, uh, because we do kind of come from similar schools of thought. So he always knows what I'm after. He's grown accustomed to my very kind of high energy. I'm so grateful for that, you know, because some guys would be like, man, screw this guy, you know, regardless of popular belief, I, I am a little bit intelligent. So, so I am soaking it in. But at the same time, you know, you know, it's just kind of like that quick mind uh, set. And David is very patient and very adaptive to it. And he knows, I mean, you heard him there at the end. He's like, okay, okay, I get what he wants. He wants, we're doing it with cards. And he knows that. He knows that my main thing I like to avoid is let's avoid using any front fixtures as much as possible. That's like my main thing. He's known that. I mean, uh, by the time we got to this project together, he, we had worked over three weeks together. So he knew me well enough. He knew how my workflow is and he knows the kind of what I'm always trying to go for. So he knew that's why he said at the end, just going for cards. What he means by that is like bounces, right? Whether whether it's black, white, uh, you know, a, a, a floppy, whatever it is, right? Because especially when we're outdoors, we have so much ambience, right? With the huge sun, he knows I'm backlighting. We're wrapping it. We've been wrapping all day with the ultra bounce. But also I think another reason why stress was so high for me, this was what we had worked the entire day towards, right? You know, just kudos to him and anyone that works with me, right? And Tristan back here, he's been working with me for a very long time, you know, since the pocket 4K days. And that was a whole different world. And that's all archived in the Patreon as well. Let's move on. You're seeing there how because I certainly go in with an idea. I always go in with an idea. I make shot designs, you know, I share those with the director and David and everyone involved. I share them with the whole crew, camera department as well. It's because I want everyone to be on the same page with us, you know. But when we get there, uh, I, I'm, I become completely open to whatever anybody uh, suggests. I'm, I am never a non-collaborator. Uh, you know, the backbone of this filmmaking community relies on collaboration, you know. Okay, let's move on here and see how this evolves. Yeah, that's cool. Right We're already looking good here. They're about to break that. Um, uh, Miguel, yes, sir. that's going to go on a duck bill over here. 
So that's going to be for the front. Open it up, open it up. So, but we got to get that's going to look good already. We'll have so ice on standby. Hang on, don't go all the way to that. Right now you see he's bringing in my 4x4, one of my 4x4 rags, and one of, and this is my 4x4 acre grid. I own all this stuff. You guys know I did gaffing on the side for like a year and a half here in LA. We didn't end up using this, but we're just auditioning things, right? We're auditioning things, you know, because David also is aware of like the stakes of this, of this specific shot. Now, looking at the map box set up here, you're probably wondering like, oh yeah, he did say he had specific filters. So obviously, you know, you gotta have ND for this situation. Uh, IRND specifically, I only use Firecrest IRNDs, and you also, I use Ultracon, Tiffin Ultracon, anytime I'm outdoor day exteriors. I've explained in the past the phenomenon of that filter, but it squeezes your waveform, long story short. And I also am using a polarizer, 138 polarizer. So there's a lot of filtration going on in the camera, uh, but it's all things that I needed for this day exterior shot. This? Yep. With either one of those. We need a little poly maybe. So we want, 300 here. No, no light. Well, we, we definitely want we'll something probably. from there. Oh, well, just but bounce. we're gonna cut it back. Okay. We'll do that back, right? For a hard edge back here on the can, like this Back side. here, okay, so that's where the 400 is gonna go here with the spot, we're gonna hit it right here. Yeah, and we that's, can it, That makes it perfect sense. Spot and then po here. just poly here. Spots go right here on this. The and then poly. I've got, I'm gonna do a two by three solid right here for, for Neg. For, yep. for and, then, and then what our fours is gonna hit the back of the bottle, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And yeah, make we'll, we'll cut it super narrow. So, so it's just perfect, <laughs> Thomas. Oh, the spot's not going on the 300? No, that is, what are we doing That's, with this we're one? We're just gonna do a can for a fill. So just put the regular can on it. A can for a fill? Uh, yeah, that one's, uh, that's yeah, his, so yeah, put, yeah. just put mine on that. No, no, I don't even know if I need that. Well, you might want a little fill from the, let's look at it. You don't have to One percent, maybe. One percent. I'm just, I'm just worried about that kidding like that. Where's the fours though? You gotta be more open to the things that are being provided to you, especially with someone like David, right? I've already said, you know, this guy is way more far experienced than I. When the time is pressed and I'm a little, you know, I am a little stubborn, but here's the thing. At the end of the day, we still auditioned it, right? I'm not against anything, right? But but the problem is, is I I am not a poker face, right? As you can clearly tell, especially if you've been on this channel a long time, I cannot hide anything, right? My wife tells me all the time, like you are you cannot lie, like I'm incapable of lying, and my face just tells all, right? So you, I mean, you see it there, like I'm 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 listening to every, what everyone's saying, and then instantly you see me like you know, poo poo it down, right? Uh, but the reality is, is like, it, again, David's used to work with me. Someone else would be like, oh, screw you, you know? Like, But David's used to work with me and he says, no, 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 just, you'll, you just, we'll just try, we'll just try. And that's really what it is. I say, okay, we'll try. Um, ultimately, I can't remember if we ended up going with it or not, I um, honestly. I, it wasn't in, it wasn't playing at all. But it was killing all this. This is blowing me out here. Maybe I need a courtesy here to block the sun. The sun's low enough with the shadows. You can go directly on, just take a look at this. That's sexy. Because that helps you here. The only problem is, is like it's super flat. Um, I think maybe we do a floppy here then. Okay. I thought okay. poly, but maybe not. Maybe just a floppy. floppy? Yeah, because right now it's hitting it beautifully. Okay. Oh, that's why. It's the spotlight. Oh, okay, that's off now? Oh, that's I why. I literally just turned it on. Now. Okay. Yeah, turn it on. off. Now, now turn it on. Now it should be on. Go a hundo on that. That's a hundo right now. And did you? That helps a lot. You want a poly here? It's cut really thin. I think it's too, um... Are you getting, are you seeing white in the reflection? Is it giving you a line? Oh yeah, it is a little bit. <laughs> I love watching this though, it's so funny, man. What I love about this and me being able to showcase this, you guys can see, I'm the working man, right? Like, there's no, like, there's no hidden wizard behind the curtain or anything like that. I'm not trying to ever pretend to you guys that I'm something I'm not, right? Like, this is the reality of it. You're watching the steps. We are literally figuring it out along the way. And a lot of it is because of what? My inexperience, right? So it's like, you know, we didn't know exactly how we we're gonna tackle this. And also like, you could plan out a perfect schedule, which I thought I did, right? But the reality is like, we were at the mercy of the sun all day long. And again, we're limited on resources and time. There was no first AD on this project. And that's always bad for someone like me. Cause I will sit here and, uh, 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 uh this isn't quite right. Yeah. <laughs> if there's a first AD, I may hate them, but at least like we can stay on track, right? Come down a little bit. I'm gonna put the next one for him. So he's, I'm gonna move him where I want the next one. Okay. Keep going, Seth. Keep coming down. Keep coming down. All the way. Keep coming down. Go past the bottles. Keep going. Keep going. 
Wave your hands around so I can see you. Right there. there you Get go. that area, please, with the other one. So in this one, you know, it was as simple as just kind of guiding in our cannonball guy in the background. I was trying to give him an idea of where to try to land. Yeah, because I'd rather, I'd rather like, well, I mean, I can do it here. You know, we can come down here. What about that? And you have a polarizer in there? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Pola, pola. Okay, yeah. okay. We got wheels on wheels, dude. But even that little bit helped it. You saw yeah, that. Totally, yeah. totally. But I'd rather be over than under. So can... Yeah, but we're neither. Yeah. Because if, if it was either of those, those traffic lights would go okay, on. Okay, good. But see, I'll show you over. That's black. over. Yeah. That's over. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. This, this saves it. There's tongs in there, right? This one just saved okay. So this, I literally love that Matt captured this BTS because this is a conversation we have all the time about the Komodo, right? One, you look at my ISO, 1280. People go, this guy is nuts. Why is he shooting 1280? And also, I want us to look at something else here. This is something else I brought up in the Patreon because I know, like, you're probably looking at this waveform, the, the one in the front, okay? So what I mean by the one in the front this white one, that waveform is the black magic waveform. But if you if you notice, if you can look beyond that, look at that one. Look at the one in the background. Not nearly as flatlined in the middle like the black magic is showing. The difference is the black magic is showing you with whatever show LUT I had, right? I, I could care less about that, right? What's important is the waveform in the background, which as you can tell, why you say, Justin, what is that? That's the waveform from the Komodo and the Komodo's waveform is reading off of the raw data. That's what really matters, right? That's all I care about because in the grade, I can make it go flat in the middle like like the Black Magic HDR Video Assist is doing, right? But obviously we're not gonna do that. You know, it, so it, for instance, if you're having trouble figuring out what I'm talking about, even though I'm trying my best to circle it here. So this is like right now, the Black Magic is showing like highlights, flat line shadows, right? The reality is, meanwhile, the real raw data of what the RGB histo uh, on the actual Komodo was showing us was, yeah, it's still gonna be bright highlights, bright shadows, but I want you to notice none of it is pushed all the way to the goalpost, right? So they're not like way out here, they're in the middle, but then it, it's more like it's more like a gradual thing like this. I mean, you can see it in the background, right? You can see it going like this. It doesn't go boom, boom, right? Because the black magic makes it look like mountains, but it wasn't that, it was more hilly than that and there was more meat in the middle, right? And that's all that matters. You wanna make sure you get that meat in the middle and what's helping us do that is that Ultracon filter, right? I talk about it all the time, it squeezes the waveform. So, you know, that's how we're keeping the those hot highs and those low lows off the goalpost and it's kind of squeezing it in. The problem is for whatever LUT I was using, it was really like pfft, crushing down the middle meat. But the reality is, that's why I don't care about looking at the LUTs and things. That's just for video villages, just for director and producer's eyes. What I am always caring about is the raw data. And another important part of that is if you look over, if you heard the things that I was talking to David about, I was showing him like we are safe. None of the traffic lights are even coming on, right? And that is important. And I've already talked about that enough on this channel. So I'll leave a couple links to uh, my breakdown on one, why I shoot at such a high ISO outdoors, but also about the realities of traffic lights and goalposts when it comes to any red digital cinema camera because as you can tell, this is the real footage. Now, you're even looking at this on a screen record. You're looking at a screen record and then with uh, YouTube compression. But you'll see now we got, you'll see what we replaced, you know, we pushed the four by four frame back and now we got this poly in here. So now you see we're, we're kind of sandwiching with uh, a little floppy cutter on this side and poly on this side, right? And all the light is essentially coming from that back, quarter back cross key. That's old school Hollywood, man. That's how, it, uh, that's how things are done. Let's do let's do a series. Bada bing, bada bing. Oh wait, let's okay, let's tail slate this real quick. I want to do another one just so we have a couple. Okay. How was flat? Well, it was go great. Really well. Really. For the wrap up here, we'll just kind of break down what we did. As you can see, um I was mentioning the rap, but I guess we just did the rap mainly for our main hero. For here, because this was such a tight shot, again, 75 mil, uh, we really tiled it in and controlled it. Like, you know, with some of that BTS, you heard me say to Dave, like, oh yeah, because we're so tight, we can just, we can put the, we can make the sun be whatever, wherever we want now. So that was kind of nice too, that why I had it scheduled at the end of the day for those exact uh, reasons. Just as a nice recap, now we know what happened here, right? So there is a, there is a black here, right, to control that. There is another black right here, right? And then there's a white poly here. And one thing we kind of skipped over is uh, David has a one by two Dato Lightstream reflector board. It's a number one and it is punchy. 
Okay, so that dado is coming in this way and it's just pinging all the way down the bottle there. And then the biggest thing that's blasting the back of the bottle was the Godox 19 degree spotlight mount and then attached to the Forza 500, right? And it's going right into the back, blasting into this, really making that lemonade pop. And then obviously the glycerin water there. The only thing is, I think we could have done a little better about controlling some of the sheen on the side of this can, but all in all, it, it's not bad. It would have been nice to, maybe if we would have had a little bit more time, is maybe get another little kick here and just make this can pop out a little bit from the background, right? Because we did a really good job of backlighting our bottle and making sure that that liquid is shining. And I know this is a can, but still it would have been nice to just have a, a our edge is a little bit too fronty. You notice our edge here is a little too fronty. We could have maybe gotten it from behind a little better and then making this a little bit better separation because you'll notice how dark this world, you know, the, the out of focus area is behind the can. And then again, yeah, in that BTS, I heard myself say, we'll do 2.8. I don't know, is this a 2.8 on Super 35? If so, that's even more insane, right? So it being that, I wish I would have gone an F4 or a T4, and then that would have just helped reveal a little bit more. It would have been nice to actually see a little bit more, right? Okay, so that's this week's breakdown on how we shot this Mike's Hard Lemonade thing. I hope you enjoyed this. I know this was a little wild and, and a little uh, off the cuff, but I thought, man, this might be cool to just show you guys also the Xenons, right? That was kind of the main ambition of it. I was kind of stoked on this product shot and I have to give a shout out to our entire uh, cast and crew of this project. It was amazing as always. Everyone, kudos to everyone for putting up with my, you know, craziness um, because, because I am a little wild um, in terms of just like, you know, my energy. And it is something I've always had conversations with my wife about, like, man, you know, the optics of that, I am not a fan of, <laughs> you know? Uh, some people find it charming. Some people find it really annoying, especially if you have no idea who I am, you're just an outsider, you know? But uh, the nice thing is, is when people do get to know me, um, they just know it's just, it's just me. You know, I, I, I'm a little bit of a, a one of a kind. Okay, as always, thank you for watching and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Away, guys, we still got good ripples. We're good there. I'll take it. Now we can tail slate. I'll take it. Take it. That was number three. Oh, you got it. Okay, cool.